Rails 5.2 right around the corner, I wanted to take a look at one of the new features that they are including, and this was included in Rails 5.1. However, now in Rails 5.2, the secrets is being removed in favor of credentials. And the idea with the credentials is to store your production secrets right there within your code base. And when you submit it up to your code repository, you won't have to worry about any prying eyes because the data will be encrypted. However, with the deprecation of the secrets in favor of the credentials, we are left with the situation of what happens when you have credentials that you want to store and you need to share them with others. However, you still need a place to manage them. And previously, the secrets.yaml file would have been a good place. But the issue with the credentials is that you don't really get the development, testing, or production namespacing that you had with the secrets and the encrypted secrets. So we're going to look at some workarounds where we can still have a namespace environment and still be able to use the encrypted credentials. So within your application under the config folder, there will be a couple of different files that we'll be working with. You have the credentials.yaml.encrypted, and then you also have the master key. And the master key is going to be the passphrase for the encryption and decryption of the credentials YAML file. And this key is not something that you want to commit to your code repository, and by default it shouldn't. However, it is something that you may want to share with the DevOps team, or you may also want to share with the other developers, depending on your company. If you try to do the secrets edit, you'll get a message saying that it's been deprecated in favor for the credentials. So if we go ahead and look at the credentials help, you can see that there's also an environment variable that you can have for the master key. So when you set this up for your CI CD or your deployments, then you can set the environment variable Rails master key to the encryption passphrase. So let's go ahead and launch our editor. So I'll call Rails credentials and then edit. And if you launch this, you'll see that it opens up in the Vim or VI or Nano, whatever the default editor is. However, if you're using something like VS Code, you still have the option to open it up within there. So within here, you can see that we have a AWS namespaced, and then we have the access key ID and the secret access key. And then we also have a secret key base. If you want to open up in a different editor, then you can prepend this with editor equals, and then enter the editor that you want to use, and then run the Rails credentials edit. And notice that even though we have credentials in there, this file is blank. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And instead, I'm going to pass a dash dash wait at the end of the code. And what this will do is that it'll tell the Rails environment to hold on before making any changes and to wait for the file to be closed from the editor code. And so now with that dash dash wait on there, you can see that we have our file opened up and then we can make our changes within here. Once we close the file, then we'll be returned to our prompt in the terminal. So let's go ahead and start our Rails console. So to access the credentials, we can type rails.application.credentials, and then we can pass in whichever key that we want. So for example, we can get our secret key base, and then you can see it returned. However, if we try to get our namespace AWS keys, and if we just type in the AWS, you can see that we're returned a hash. So with this hash, to get the access key ID, we can simply just pass it in like this, and then we get our value. So this is the basics of how the credentials work. However, I'm not quite satisfied with this because if the access key and the secret access key are being used within my application, we're going to run into some problems whenever we're on our development environment or our testing environment versus the production environment. And that would have to be taken into consideration when doing the actual development, and that could be a real nuisance. So I want to look at solving this issue in this episode. So within my config folder, I want to have a development.yaml file, and maybe also a test.yaml file, and I want to store my credentials in here if I need them. And so with something like the AWS, I would just have a dev underscore one, two, three as my access key, and then dev 345 as the secret access key. And then we would have whatever for the secret key base. And we would have something similar for the test environment. So the main issue is going to be whenever we are developing our application and interacting with the credentials. So for example, whenever we are interacting with the AWS, we're going to be calling it within our code, definitely not our view, but this is just for illustration purposes. So we would call our rails.application 
dot credentials, then the AWS. And this would return our hash. However, the problem is going to be in our development environment, this isn't going to work well because it's going to default to our production credentials instead of our development ones. So what I would like to do is to change up the credentials a bit in how it's working. So instead of just calling the credentials.aws, I'm going to call credentials.environment and then .aws. And I want to return the same thing, but instead of decrypting and looking at the credentials YAML file, I want to look at the development YAML file because this environment is the Rails development. So under the config folder in the application.rb, I'm going to create a new class and I want to reference it within here. So we'll call the require relative and then we'll just call this file the Rails environment. And then in the application class, we need to insert in a config and after it has been initialized, we can run a block and we want to set the Rails side application dot credentials dot env equals to the rails env dot new and this is a class that we'll be creating so under the config folder we'll create our rails env file and within this file we'll create a new class and the class we'll call the rails env and then we'll create our initializer method then we'll close out the class so we have two situations one we want to load our database yaml file or the test just depending on our environment so I'm going to create a method called the load environment variables. And we only want to do this if it's not the production environment. And so we can load this only on our development and test environment by calling unless the rails environment is production. Otherwise we would want to fall back to the default behavior and allow the encrypted credentials. So I'll go ahead and create these two private methods. And so then we need to load the file and depending on our environment, we'll want to load the development.yaml file, or maybe we'll want to load the test.yaml file. So I'll create a, another private method, and I'll just call this the file name. And we're going to join the file from our Rails root directory in the config folder. And then we want to get which environment we're currently working with. We'll call our rails.environment.yaml. And so for example, with our development environment, if no file has been created, then we would just want to skip any steps within here. So we can call return unless the file exists, and then we can pass in the file name. If the file does exist, then we would want to load the YAML file. And because it's a YAML file, we can call yaml.safeload, and then we can open the file with the file.open, and then pass in the file name. And then we can loop through each one of the values. And so I'll set the two parameters here as a key and the value. And so now, because we set the Rails application credentials dot environment equal to a new instance of this class, we're going to want to return a method just so we get the same kind of functionality that we get with the credentials. So we can do a self dot class dot send, and then we want to define the method, and the method name is going to be the key dot down case, just in case that there's uppercase within the key, this is just a preference. And so then we just want to return the value. And we'll need to fix the syntax error where we call do, and that looks good. So we'll call the load environment variables, unless if it's our production environment. And then we need to allow the encrypted credentials. And we're basically going to just pass through how it normally worked. And so we can do something similar where the self class send, and then we have our define method. And in this case, we're going to try to mimic as best as possible what the credentials will do. So if you call something that's not defined within the credentials file, it's just going to return nil. So we can do a method missing, and this is going to take some arguments. However, the main thing that we're going to use is the method, and the arguments is not going to be used, and neither is if a block is passed. So we can call our Rails application dot credentials, and we can send our method that we wanted to run. And add a little typo down here. It's not supposed to be Rails. It's supposed to be file. And when the YAML file gets loaded in, it's going to load in the keys as strings. So we can call the hash with indifferent access. And this way we can reference the keys as either a string or we can reference it as a symbol. And so to test this out now, I'm going to load on the left side the production environment. So I'll set the Rails environment equal to production and then launch the Rails console. On the right hand side, I'm going to launch the development environment. So in the production environment, if I type the Rails application 
dot credentials. I can still access my AWS keys. And if I run this on my development environment, I can still access them just like I was able to before. However, now on the production environment, I can call environment and call AWS, and I can then access the keys like that way as well. And if I do this on the development environment, you can see that now I get my development keys. So within my application, I don't have to worry about the environment variables or anything like that. I can simply just reference the credentials.environment dot whichever key I need. And the same thing works with the secret key base. And notice in each case, I'm passing these in as if they were a method. And it helps if I spell it correctly. And there's our development environment, the secret key base. And if we do that on our production, we get our production key. So for me personally, if I were to use the encrypted credentials, I would probably favor this method over using what just comes default with Rails. And that's simply because within my application, I don't want to have to worry about which environment I'm working with. And I want to make sure that the keys that I am using will be exposed only to the proper environment. So by setting this environment, I know that I'm not going to accidentally use the production environment keys unless if they're in my development YAML file. And the other added benefit to this is that in something like my configurator for the active storage or carrier wave or shrine, I could reference my environment and then the AWS access key ID, and then we get our variable from our development YAML file. So I don't have to worry about which environment I'm on, it's just going to work throughout the code base, and that's very similar to how the secrets YAML file worked in the past. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.